everyone. Welcome back to another seller interview session. I hope you're doing well. Today, I am joined by KP. KP, I've known you for, I think I had a look and it's coming up to like near enough a year now. Um, top tier Amazon seller gives out really, really useful advice. And he's also a bit of an aspiring actor because the first video that I saw with you in it was the one where you were uh, being a guy called Manny who... Yeah, just couldn't get it right with his finance and then he discovers Amazon and everything goes great for him that was to this day one of my favorite ever Amazon based videos that I've I've seen on TikTok um <laughs> tell me a bit more about you and are you actually an aspiring actor will Manny make a comeback in any <laughs> of your future videos <laughs> um I think that's it for Manny season one you know we'll see what's happening with him season two um <laughs> Yeah, um, super, super great to be on the call. Um, just a bit of about my Amazon journey. So I started way back when, this feels like ages ago now, um, 13th, I'm very good with numbers, 13th of January 22 is when I started. Right. Nice. And funnily enough, the way I started was um, very strange. So I was just um, complaining to my brother, like to, like towards the back end of 2021, saying, I want a simple business model, right? I want something that you can just pick up, you sell it for a certain amount, and then you make a profit. Very, very simple business structure. So um, start of the year 22, he just sent me a video of this guy on YouTube saying, you know, watch this guy, you know, tell me what you think. So this guy is this Amazon FBA seller, you know, 17 years old, multi-millionaire, driving a Ferrari, Lamborghini, all, all that sort of stuff. And obviously people take to that sort of content differently, right? Some people might see it and be like, oh, this is a lie. Or some people might see it and be like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. For mm -hmm. me, I just see that sort of stuff of motivation. Whether he's made it up or he's lying or what, I don't really care. It's motivating me, right? So I just said yeah. to myself, you know what? Let me just try this, right? So let me just have a look and see what I can do with this. So, um, yeah, so I read up on it because um, obviously a lot of this stuff was self-taught for me. So um, I read up on it, watched a couple of videos on YouTube and I said, you know what, let me just give this a go. So um, I set aside 500 pounds and said, listen, this, this 500 pound is going completely towards Amazon FBA. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, at least I tried, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let me know if I'm going going to to no, 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 that's fine. No, I was going to ask you that anyway. Like, how much how much did you get started with? But yeah, yeah, carry on. <laughs> no worries. Um, so I started with five hundred pounds, and what I did is that I went to B and M stores. So I'm not sure you're familiar with B and M stores, but they're a discount store in the UK. They got a lot of locations around the UK. So I'm based in Kent, but a bit more into London, so like Openton, Bromley way. So um, what I did is that I was going at, just picking out stores before I even left my house on Google Maps where, you know, where this BNM is, where that one is. So I didn't want to go out to just one. I wanted to check out different ones. So I went as far as out to even Chatham and Rochester. So I went pretty far out, basically. And the reason why I did that, I had this strange idea that people out there would are less likely to do Amazon FBA. Mm -hmm. That's probably not true. I just had an idea that it's more of a probably an inner city thing. But anyway, I went out there, I found a couple of deals, um, and then I basically repeated what I was doing. So when I saw a deal in a certain BNM, I'll go to the next BNM that's closest, pick up the same deal. And I made some money back from it. So I said, yeah, this could be uh, something that's pretty fruitful. So yeah, I just kept on going from there, really. Okay. So you started off with, uh, you know, just, just retail arbitrage, which is one of the sort of like most accessible ways to, you know, get started with like sourcing, getting getting the ball rolling with with Amazon. Um, so so since you started uh, and now, what are some of the biggest differences like in terms of like the methods that you use and like how like how much is your has your business grown um i would say in terms of methods so like when i first started it was mainly ra so retail arbitrage me going to stores um looking at deals seeing if that makes sense or not and then that slowly transitioned into online so a mix of doing online arbitrage and retail so for people that don't know online arbitrage is basically the same thing as retail but just on your on your computer or laptop whatever internet source you're using and then um things really changed when I went into a limited company, basically. Um, so I started doing wholesale from that point. And I was kind of forced into making um, a limited company because what Amazon had done at that, when I started, I started as an individual because I wasn't too sure about my journey. I didn't want to make a limited company first until I was sure about what I was doing. So mm -hmm. Amazon um, deactivated my account and said to me, you know, for you to continue selling with us, you need to enter in your company number and your company information. At this point, you know, I hadn't, I didn't have a company yet and they had money that I had, um, that I'd made from sales basically to pay me and they're not going to pay me until I actually 
register that. So um, that kind of forced my hand a bit, but I didn't know it was a blessing in disguise. So when I made my company, then I realized, oh, can, now I can ungate products and, you know, now I can um, go to wholesalers. Now I can, you know, go to exhibitions. So things really took off um, for me from then, because obviously when you go into these wholesalers, you're getting better prices. And, you know, it was a very good touch me using Bible Pro then seeing, not seeing that red light and then not giving like, like not giving too much care to that red light around um, the uh, eligible part anymore. Because when I was selling as an individual, you can't ungate it if that's red. But obviously, if it's red and I'm a wholesaler, now, sorry, and I'm buying from wholesalers, I can now ungate it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, when when you uh, when you got started with with Amazon, like what? I mean, uh, some of that stuff might have changed now. Maybe you've set yourself some new ones. But like, what were sort of like the main goals? for you when you when you got started out like in terms of like what did you plan to make x amount of money by the end of the year um was it a case of i want to turn this side hustle into a into a full-time thing like what were some of some of the goals that you started out with yeah that's a good question i think the goals and i think this isn't just for me this is for people in general goals always change right so you have a goal and you know you might just achieve it easily be like okay i need to change that like for example for me when i first started my main goal was just to break even you know it's pretty simple simple talk i don't want to lose any money but if i gain money i'll be happy right so mm -hmm. at, at a minimum i want to break even so when that came around for me uh pretty quickly i was like okay i need a new target now so after i broke even it's like okay cool in my first two months i'm going to have done at least 3k in sales right mm -hmm. so i achieved that and i was just like okay <laughs> now now what's the next goal so after i kept on making new goals and new goals and not not a lot of them not all of them was related to um revenue sometimes it was um could be related to profit like you know i want to make sure that yeah. i'm making x amount of profit you know so um i feel like it continued to change but i feel like the important thing is to make sure that you're challenging yourself yeah. like you know after well, after i broke even that very first time I could have said to myself, sorry, I even made, I may even made a profit. So I could have even said to myself, okay, let me just set a new target. That's not that much more, but I wanted to make sure I stretched myself because if I didn't make a stretch target, I'm not going to bother looking at online um, retailers. I'm not going to bother looking into holes. I'm not going to bother to do these things because the target is too easy. So I always say, you know, just make, make a stretch target each time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like the idea of doing that sort of like, sort of like little bits at a time. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I respect that a lot. Uh, and uh, like for this year, what is it that you want to have achieved like by the end of the year, by the end of sort of like next month? Like what what's, what are some of your goals for, for this year? Um, so I would say my goals are more to do with my supply network. So um, my current suppliers are very good. You know, um, I feel like I've been working with them for a while now. So a lot of them I get from exhibitions and things like that. So I want to take the next step whereby, you know, I'm, me in more um talking to brands basically so obviously um as people know you know how it usually works a brand i.e the brand slash manufacturer will sell to the wholesaler the wholesaler will sell to the retailer the retailer sell to the individual right mm -hmm. so this far in my journey i've cut out the uh retailer by going straight to wholesale yeah what i plan to do this year really a lot more is to cut out the wholesale and go straight to and go straight to the brand basically because then mm -hmm. you're going to better prices but the thing about that is it can be a bit tough because you know often with these bigger brands they might say to you okay we'll sell with you or work with you however you need to buy 1000 units or 10000 yeah. units so it's it's a bit it's a bit more it's a bit more to it but that's my main goal for this year to make sure that I'm you know I'm I'm really pushing with the with those brands and obviously everyone always has a revenue target so um so far, like I looked the other day, like 250K since I started in sales. Um, mm. So if it was up to me, and I wish it was up to me, but you know, it's up to how my supply goes. I really want to do at least, at least like 200 in this year alone, hopefully, yeah. if I get to speak to the people I want to. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll smash it. Like yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, with, uh, so like with, with having dealt with wholesale suppliers and such before, um, for anyone out there that's interested in in getting into the the wholesale model and you know reaching out and connecting to like these wholesale suppliers like what would you say are some of the best ways to to do that um i would definitely say this is actually quite a simple one this is what i started with when i was first looking if you specialize in a certain you know type of category of product like for example let's say you you um you specialize in beauty products you might have, you could just type in beauty wholesale into 
into Google and then wholesalers will come up from UK. Or if you specialize in toys, you can put toy toy wholesale and wholesalers will come up. Obviously, that's a very basic way of doing things, right? So like, for example, a popular toy wholesaler out there is NDA Toys Wholesale. So what you can do as a next step is that a lot of people don't know you can use LinkedIn. So what you can do on LinkedIn is type in, for example, the name I just gave, NDA Wholesale, um, NDA Toys Wholesale. And then what will happen, it will say similar companies like this on the right. So that's mm -hmm. going to give you a list of all wholesalers that are like that, basically. And you can go yeah. through that as well. Another way is um, exhibitions. So um, exhibitions are really good because you can get all of, like a lot of suppliers and a lot of brands all under one roof. I think the biggest ones we have in UK that I like to go to anyway is um, Spring Fair in Birmingham at the NEC, which is a huge, 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 huge place. I, I like it goes on for four days i wish i had more time there but i didn't unfortunately um but it's really good there because you meet a lot of people there's a lot of good connections and the good thing about that is that there's actually a convention that was up the road from there as well that someone at the toy fair told me to, no, not at the toy fair sorry at any seed that told me to go to um that leads me to my next point the toy fair london olympia is very good as well a lot of brands there as well and then there's, and there, there's a lot of other exhibitions that, here in the uk but those are two main two that i like just because there's a lot of suppliers there yeah no that, that's that, that's really interesting no i like getting out to exhibitions and stuff um is definitely a, like a really good idea uh and especially in like the sort of like age as well where lots of things are done digitally like socializing and, and stuff like that turns more digital i think actually getting out and about and physically yeah. meeting people is mm -hmm. is awesome and and we should do that as an as and where we can like especially as you know as a seller um like one of the things is that like it is a like it's an online income so there's a lot of sitting you know with your laptop and or phone or you know however it is that you're going to be doing it um so I think getting out and about and, and meeting people where you kind of making those sort of like real connections is super important so um yeah no getting to exhibitions is definitely a is definitely a good one yeah definitely and you know uh, and especially how you carry yourself when you're there as well like I feel obviously I do, I do mentoring as well, right? So there's a lot of people that you know I told to go to these exhibitions and things like that. So I always told them at the end of the day, don't feel like because you're an Amazon seller and you're going to these exhibitions, they're doing you a favor. No, they're not doing you a favor. They want to sell, you want to buy. It's a simple transaction, you know. So when you speak to them, don't speak to them like they're doing you a favor. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, kind of have your just, just have your um. I was gonna say have everything you need there basically i.e a business card a business card shows that you're serious you know because at the end of the day you don't want to go there and they ask for your business cards and you say you don't have one it just looks like you're not prepared so you know just um go there and just be you know sure about yourself really that's what i'd say yeah yeah no that, that, that that's really good advice and in, in terms of business cards as well uh, i think i've seen it where like like you can get you can get like loads for like not very much at all so like business cards are, are definitely a, a worthwhile yeah. investment yeah, Vista, and I think I got like like a hundred for like thirty pounds or something like that. So yeah, it's yeah. definitely. Yeah, no, that all no, all that's really good advice. Um, and for anyone out there that that was interested in getting into wholesale, like definitely um take note of those tips. They're going to go a long way to helping you get started with uh, with that form of, of of Amazon selling model. Um, and so I guess like my next question is um like looking back on your entire like Amazon journey from the start to now is there anything at all that you would go back and do any differently or are you happy with like your entire journey how all of it's gone like if you could go back to you at the beginning and say and say something to yourself like what would that be if anything um i would probably say go um start ltd so start a company quicker is what i'd say definitely yeah. And don't get me wrong, it really did help me learn the ropes as an individual, like taking my time with certain things. But at the end of the day, I think I was in that sort of period a bit too long. So I only formed my company in June 22. I started in Jan. That's six months as being an individual. That's six months. I can't ungate stuff. Don't get me wrong. There are some wholesalers out there that don't ask you for your company details. So obviously you can ungate stuff through those guys, but they're very few and far between. The majority of people are gonna ask, what's your company number? What's your company name? So I was really buying and selling for six months without a company. So it's a bit like, I'm not, I'm not able to actually reach the heights that I should have been reaching because I don't have a company. So if I could go back, I would definitely, you know, two months in, once I know, for me, it, once I know how to source an item, 
but get it to my house, send it to Amazon um, and get paid out for it. Once I know that process, I should just go LTD in my personal opinion. That's what I should have done. Yeah. Yeah. No, no I mean, yeah. So um, really good advice for anyone out there who's in, in perhaps a similar position and, and considering it. Um, sometimes it is a case of, you know, you just got to go ahead and, and, and just do it. Getting started with Amazon, setting up a limited company, it's just stuff that you just 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 got to go and do. Yeah, I would say anyone that you see on Amazon that's doing well, because obviously a lot of people see stuff on the social socials and all that sort of stuff. None of those people will not have a limited company. All of these people are going to have a company. It's you literally can't make a lot of money on Amazon without a company. It's not mm -hmm. possible because they, it's either they're going to force you <laughs> to make a company because you're making too much too much sales, or or you're just not going to be selling enough, basically, really, in my opinion, anyway. Mm -hmm. No, 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 really, 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 really good advice. Um, what I want to do now, right, is move on to the entertainment value in, in these interviews, right? So it's basically just whatever question spawns into my head. Um, yeah, I'm worried now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess my first question is, right, if you could sit down and you know have a have a drink with anyone any any drink or and i guess do sort of like anything but you can you can meet anyone um alive or dead who would it be like meet anyone and have a chat with them alive or dead mm. that's a good question um it sounds it sounds stupid what I'm going to say, but it depends what drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, okay, let, let, let's go for uh, what I mean. What what would you what do you like to drink in terms of like alcohol? Like what what's your go to? Um, my go to, do you know what my go to will be a double rum and coke. Yeah. Okay, so you're having a double uh, a double rum and coke with. Okay. Thinking that like, I feel like I have to be a comedian. I feel like I have to be... <laughs> um. Do you know what? Do you know, I would say Chris Tucker. I, I think he's hilarious. <laughs> you know uh, Chris Tucker from Rush Hour. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're talking. Hilarious. About. If it was just if it was just um, like a normal drink, like a water, I would I would <laughs> love to speak to um, you know what? Let's say let's say Neil Armstrong. And the reason why I say Neil Armstrong is because I just need to get an idea of what that experience was like, right? You know, being not even just being on the moon, being out in space must be unreal so yeah i just want to get an yeah. insight on that, to be completely honest yeah no i i completely agree with you yeah like it's just it's just people. nuts to think <laughs> that you yeah to be sat across from someone that's literally like been like way up there in space yeah, yeah that's insane i also love the fact as well that water equals neil armstrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a serious conversation i need to i need to uh you know show myself to be a serious person <laughs> yeah. i love that um yeah um next question if right i'm trying to think if i can word this one um right so would you rather and <laughs> i can kind of like feel like the the oh <laughs> there when I say, would you rather um would you rather eat only your favorite food for the next 50 years mm -hmm. or would you rather go the next 50 years being able to eat anything else besides your most favorite food i would definitely pick anything else besides my favorite food just because there's other things that i love too but it's just not my favorite and yeah. you have so much more to pick. i feel like no one will be able to eat the same thing because it will just quickly become not your favorite food anymore. You'd hate it yeah. after. I feel like even after a month, I would hate it. To be totally honest. Uh, what 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 actually is your your favorite sort of like thing to eat? My favorite thing to eat. That's a good question. I like too much food. I think that's the problem. Do you know what? I'm big on Mex I'm big on Mexican food. You know, like I don't okay. know what. Um, like fajitas, enchiladas. Casadillas, all of that sort of stuff, I love. I don't know why, because I don't eat it that often. When I have it, I love it. <laughs> is it is that the kind of thing that that uh, that that you would like make yourself, or is it the sort of thing that you'd go out for? I'd make my I'd make myself, but I prefer to go out for it because they probably do it better than I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Like, I, I'm I'm the same as you. Like, I, I love myself in Mexican. I don't know why I don't have it more because it's great, 
but you yeah. know when it comes to that that bit in the day when you think what actually is it that i'm going to make for dinner today yeah. like <laughs> i'm an adult struggle like what do you do for dinner every day uh, it gets to that point and then the only thing that's not in my head is is mexican stuff and it's crazy because I, I like it so much yeah uh, and, and a lot of this stuff as well like sorry it's easy to make a lot of the time as well it, well, it, it, it is it is yeah. so i don't know why, i don't know why it's just not a thing um and like like so like my my mother's from from california um and a lot of the stuff that that yeah. like, that she had growing up was was mexican food right and obviously that kind of like those kind of things get like passed like down to me and so like, i know how to make like loads of these things but again it just doesn't like it just doesn't come to me um like out of all of like the sort of like mexican dishes and stuff like like do you have a favorite out of out of that selection if it's if all of them are done to like the best of their abilities probably probably um a fajitas probably if i'm being honest yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, I, I, I did always love them <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that that's a great choice. Yeah, I, I love myself. Yeah, I love myself a fita, but sometimes like you just need an enchilada in your life. That's yeah, right. true. With the cheese on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To be fair, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that that's going to be written on on my gravestone one day. You just need an enchilada <laughs> in your life. Um. Oh, and so my final like random question of the interview. Is so you say that uh, you, uh, you you mentioned to me earlier before before we we did this interview was that you you love yourself your your, your TV you like you like films mm -hmm. do you have uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this up a little bit because I think it'll be really hard to sort of just ask what's your favorite thing to watch ever so I'm gonna break it up into into two here so what is your favorite movie and if you've got a bunch like I do um, I guess just one of your favorite movies. And what is your favorite show? Oh, so favorite film? I already know. Always, always the same film. City of God. Have you watched it before? You know what? I haven't. I haven't seen it before. Very, very, very good film. Always, always in. It's um the whole thing's in Portuguese, basically, but it's really, okay. really good. I feel like if it's gone on IMDb, it'll be a nine something. It has to be. Great yeah. film. Love, loved it. Um, don't. I'm gonna be checking in with you next week to see if you've watched it. By the way. <laughs> I really love, really love City of God. Another film that I like because of the ending is Usual Suspects. Right. Um, it's got, a, you know those films that have a very big twist at the end, basically, that yes. makes the whole yeah. film spin on its head. So Usual Suspects might be number two. Favourite show? This, I think this is a bit more difficult for me. Um, I really liked 24. Big right. fan of uh, Jack Bauer. Um, I, I've got to give a top three, sorry. So I'd say 24... Sopranos, if you've watched it, great yep. film. Yes, great show. Love Sopranos, and also this is tight, but I'd say The Wire. I really like The Wire as well. The Wire was great. So yeah, that'll be my top three. But probably twenty four first because I feel like I watched that loads of times. <laughs> how many? How many times have uh, have you rewatched it over? Are you not a big? Um, twenty four. I've watched. This is so embarrassing. I've probably watched twenty four four times, and the reason why it's embarrassing because obviously there's eight seasons, twenty four episodes each, and I've watched it four times. So <laughs> that, is, that is that is bad, but I loved it. Loved yeah. it. No, I mean when when you find that when you find that thing that that you like you love it, it like it it has tremendous rewatch value. Yeah. Um, like for 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 me, like, like I wouldn't be embarrassed about like what about about watching uh, about watching that so many times over. Uh, for for me, like the amount of times I've watched uh, the amount of times I've watched both uh, The Office uh, mm -hmm. and the, and The Walking Dead over and over and over. And it let me ask the golden not... question. Let me ask the golden question: The Office UK or The Office US? US. Ah, oh, there you go. That's the right answer. That's I've US. never watched. I've never watched the UK one ever. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm. I, I've seen bits of it, but I've never thought I need to sit down and, and you know watch this. Like the the US one, like you're invested straight away, and there's just so much more of it as well. So, yeah, yeah. really, really good, really, really. I think and, that's my favorite sitcom. To be totally honest, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> it's it's a great thing to have on as well. Like whilst you whilst you're doing your bits and pieces, like, yeah. just, just there in in the background, and it like like it's funny, makes you happy. So. Like, uh, yeah, I feel like it's a great way to, like, get through your day. Yeah, for sure. Um, Awesome. So I really appreciate you having come on and uh, had this interview with me. Loads and loads of great tips 
um as per as per usual uh for anyone out uh, anyone out there that is is watching and wants to follow your journey and to, like find out more about what you're doing and get even more great tips he does tips on a tuesday that is one of my favorite things about your channel um where can people find you sure so um on instagram and twitter and tiktok it's all of the same at so at no delay fba uh, N-O-D-E-L-A-Y-F-B-A. I'm so happy I can spell that. That's the first time I've ever spelled that out before. <laughs> I'm happy I got that right. Um, so at No Delay FBA on all of those platforms. And my website is www.nodelayfba.co.uk. So yeah. Awesome. Go and check out his channels. Really, really great content. It's funny as well when you put on the spot about spelling something that you just forget. Yeah, I was like, oh no. <laughs> Even the most simplest thing. I do to make sure I got that. I do make sure I got that right. <laughs> um but yes it is n-o-d-e-l-a-y f-b-a that's how you spell it so it is no delay f-b-a um mm -hmm. yeah definitely go ahead and check out his stuff really really good advice um and if you find the the manny video you are 100 gonna love it um but yeah thank you so much kp for having joined me today really really appreciate it uh, is there anything else that you wanted to say before uh we say goodbye um, I was just probably say a tip for people starting off, you know, like I feel yeah. like a lot of people, you know, um, give up before they actually get to the point that actually starts making things easier. So I'd always say, you know, just, just stick with it. Just like a lot of things in life, you know, you know, things that are good and worth staying and you need to work hard for. So yeah, just keep going, I'd say. And that I think is one of the best bits of advice, uh, of all, like whatever it is that you're doing within that business, it's just the case of. Of, of keep going don't give up and then like who knows where you'll end up and that's a great thing about amazon as well like you can grow it as much as you want to grow it it can remain a side hustle it can be something that you know completely changes your life and you know becomes a full-time thing um but yeah no really really good advice uh thanks once again for having joined me thank you to everyone as well that has uh come on and watched and i'll see you all very soon <laughs>